George would immediately stay still and close his eyes, too scared to his stomach to move. But one night, something strange happened. Hello! And welcome to Represented Podcast Storybooks and More for African Kids. My name is Ugwe Kizye, the host, and I'm here my co-host. <laughs> Tonya Falugi Ekezie, who is laughing because he's doing that intro with hiccups. <laughs> if you've picked that up, it's because Ugu has hiccups right now. So, yes, welcome to Represented Podcast Storybooks and More for African Kids. This podcast aims to shine a light on the amazing content out there by African authors and content makers which feature African characters. At Simone's Oasis, our motto is empowering the African child through entertainment. And so with our represented podcast, we make it easy for parents to discover books and more that have their children fully represented because hashtag representation matters. Today, hmm, Ugo, do we have any guests today? No. Yep, that's no guest. No guest, it's just us people. It's myself and Ugo. And that because it is our last show of the season. Yeah. yeah. So we wanted to do something special. Why you say, well, we thought it would be a great opportunity for Ugo and I to each share the favorite children's book of that we like at the moment, right? I've got a favorite one and you've got a favorite one at the moment. It, wait, I'm not supposed to read an adult children's books. Hey, see the shade. No, this is a podcast for children. And so I have picked a children's book. Okay, so in fact, let me confess something. I even read children's books without my children. I absolutely love, I love picture books. I love children's books. So I still read them as an adult. So let's start with you, Ugo. What book have you chosen? Mystery. At the Ebenezer Lodge. Oh, see, see, bulletin. Mystery, Mystery at Ebenezer Lodge. <laughs> Mystery at Ebenezer Luggage. Uh, Ebenezer Luggage. Mystery at Ebenezer Lodge. Who's it by? Do you last day? Do you or last day? Do you or last day? Okay, so what it's what is it about? Maybe just read that the where it tells you the synopsis at the back of the book. The Elisani children are on holidays at their grandparents' house in Ibadan until their grandfather has to travel to Ilori or Jodli along with their neighbor, Nosa. They are said to spend one week in the care of their grandmother's aunt. He has 79-year-old mama on the way of Ebenezer Lodge. Mm-hmm. But, but the old mansion holds more than more in the store for them than a quiet holiday. Someone is getting into the old building on the ground without using the doors. The children are determined, determined to get to the roof, to, to the, the root of this tree at all costs. Hmm. So it's a mystery. It's a. It's a curiosity. Hmm. So why did you pick that book? Because there are some mysteries. Because there are some mysteries, mysteries and ghosts. Ooh, there's ghosts? Oh, I like ghost stories. And what is it? Is there, is there a particular character? Is there something that happens particularly that you really, really like in the book? I liked when they got back home. What? You liked the end? Yes. <laughs> You're hilarious. And Who's your favorite character? Bolu. Mm. Why? My favorite character is Bolu because he watches too many Disney movies and he acts like them. <laughs> he acts like the Disney characters. Interesting. So we are going to read just a few pages from Mystery at Ebenezer Lodge right after this break. Stay with us. I'm Tony Falugi Ekezie, and if you're enjoying this 
episode of Represented Podcast Storybooks and More for African Kids, brought to you by Simone's Oasis and Africa Business Radio. Why not listen to our other podcast, Special Moms Africa? Real talk on special needs parenting. Don't forget to put on your notifications, like, and enjoy. That's right, that is an enthusiastic welcome back. Oh, yeah. And as promised, we read Mystery at Ebenezer Lodge by Duni or Latin Day. So we're just going to read a little Ooh, section from it. Four pages. I'm willing to bet my formal supper she's going to see something sinister. Taiwo concealed a smile. The children waited while Mama, with an air of urgency, struggled with the rusty lock. Finally, with a determined jerk from Mama, the padlock succumbed. Well, here goes, Kainde said under her breath. The door creaked loudly as Bosun pushed it in, inch by inch, letting in some light and brightening up the room a little. He peeped in first and then stepped aside for Mama to enter. Then he followed her in. Bolu and Nosa were right behind him and Kainde followed closely by Taiwo. Folaka entered last, hesitant, but not willing to be left alone outside. As their eyes adjusted to the dim interior of the farmhouse, they were able to make out the objects inside. There were shelves on the wall facing the door, and farm tools lay arranged on some of them. There were also neat folded clothes, three pairs of rubber boots, some rubber gloves, and brooms. A crude but solid wooden table stood in the center of the room, with a bench pushed against it. There was an old wheelbarrow on the right side of the table, with a hand trowel and hammer inside it. And in a corner was a large old chest with a half a bag of cement on it. Mama walked round the room as if inspecting it, and then stood by the table, mulling over something only she knew. Then she began to walk towards the door. She didn't see anything, Bosun whispered to Bolu. I was kind of hoping she would, Bolu sounded disappointed. Kane Day heard the boys and rolled her eyes at them before proceeding to follow Mama. Then Mama stopped suddenly. Kane Day couldn't believe her eyes and the look on her face showed it. Bolu gave a triumphant smirk. Just, just a minute, children, Mama said. She made her way back to the wheelbarrow as the children parted to let her through. Kainde frowned at Taiwo, who only shrugged. Is something wrong, Baba? Bolu asked. Mama picked up the harbor in the wheelbarrow. Someone has been here, she said, but the door was locked, just like the others. Kainde began, and the lock was rusty. It took you a while to get to open. Someone has been coming here. Mama affirmed. Let's go, okay? Kayne persisted, but the door was... Our visitor does not need the door, it seems. Mama said her voice quiet and firm. The silence that following remained till they got back into the road at broad daylight. The car stood arrived at, and they all got in. The children were p- puzzled face all through the silent drive back as they walked into the house. Go get cleaned up, children, Mama said. There will be snacks for you when you come back downstairs. And with that, she walked down the corridor and disappeared behind the door. As soon as they were on the stairs, the children began talking. Does anyone know what she meant by our visitor does not need the door? Kainde asked. Does she mean what I think she means? Bolu said. You mean? Nosa looked at him. Don't say it, Folake pleaded. A ghost? Bolu finished for him and Nosa nodded. That's ridiculous, Taiwo said. A ghost indeed. By now they were on the landing and they stood in a circle. 
Do you have any other explanation for our visitor does not need the door? Bolu asked Taiwo. No, she replied hesitantly. But a ghost? Come on. Those doors have not been unlocked in ages, and if truly someone has been in those buildings... Bozu gave an exaggerated shudder. And that is what we are reading from Mystery at Ebenezer Lodge by Duni Olatunde. So you can definitely see why or hear why Ugo picked it. Hmm? Mystery. So is there a ghost or you can't give it away, Ugo? There's a ghost. Did you just give it away? <laughs> So, ooh, there's a ghost. I love a good ghost story. So, I guess it's my turn. It's time for you to ask me the questions, Ugo. So, question one. What book have you chosen? I have chosen Beauty in the Dark, written by Georgina Duke and illustrated by Ella Duke. What is it about? The book is about a little boy named George who was afraid of the dark. One night after Nepa snatched the light, George decides to be brave. He stares into the darkness and discovers something beautiful. Hmm, interesting premise, I think. Why did you pick the book? What do you like so much about it? The first thing that got my attention of the book is the way it looks. It looks very different to a lot of children's books because the backgrounds are all black, but then the pictures on top are extremely colorful. So it's a very unique visual book and I really, really like that. But I just, there's something about the story that just connects to my heart. And I guess when we read it shortly, the listeners can decide for themselves. But I really loved the the message in the book and the kindness in the book. I really, really liked it. And just the discovery, this boy that just discovers his courage. So that's why I like it. Wow, interesting. Stay tuned. We are going to read the book after this break. I'm Toye Falogi Ekezie, and if you're enjoying this episode of Represented Podcast Storybooks and More for African Kids, brought to you by Simone's Oasis and Africa Business Radio, why not listen to our other podcast, Special Moms Africa? Real talk on special needs parenting. Don't forget to put on your notifications, like, and enjoy. Welcome back from the break and we are going to read Beauty in the Dark, written by Georgina Duke, illustrated by Ella Duke. Ella Duke, that was very enthusiastic. So here goes Beauty in the Dark. This is the story of a little boy named George. George loved to build his own toys. Every night after dinner, all his family sat around the television to watch their favorite shows and make jokes. But George had a little dot in his belly. He was secretly afraid of the dark. Shh! Whenever Nepa took light and threw everyone into total darkness for hours without any warning, George would immediately stay still and close his eyes, too scared to his stomach to move. But one night, something strange happened. George was stalling bedtime, when suddenly, and yet as no surprise, Nepa took light. Instead of crouching rigid with fear, George, emboldened by the newfound courage of a soon-to-be eight-year-old, decided to try something different. He opened his eyes, and stared into the darkness. George started to spot the most beautiful colors. They were floating shapes, right where his loved ones were sitting. At first, he thought there was something wrong with his eyes. He kept blinking, scratching, widening them. But nothing happened. The fact that he was really seeing people's hearts. 
It was incredible. Big, small, blue, green, yellow, red, and round triangular. The hearts were all different and yet all majestic. It was a mag- magical sight. As the time went by, his vision grew stronger. He noticed remarkable rocks of connecting the hearts of his loved ones. He recognized the threads between his father's and his mother's, his sibling and himself, himself and all of them. All different sizes and colors are beautiful. George began to see those threads with his friends and his schoolmates too. Even football was better. George no longer saw just players, but an orchestra of hearts beaming together from the crowd to the players on the field. All around him in the dark, a festival of dancing colors. At the end of the year came. It was time to visit Grandma in her village. George was looking forward to this holiday because he would be free to explore everywhere with no risks of being interrupted by Nepa. George was probably the only child happy with the power cuts because it gave him a chance to practice what he loved. Over there, he was sure the hearts would shine as bright as stars. On the first night they arrived, the family all gathered around Grandma to eat and share stories under the moonlight. A beautiful light caught George's eye. It was coming from his grandmother's chest. It was the brightest heart I've ever seen. Her heart was shaped like a flower. Each petal was weaved into a child's heart. George was mesmerized. He asked, Grandma, do you see that thread coming out of your chest? Grandma looked at George. Her heart was beaming. She replied, I do. George, still not blinking, added, I thought I was the only one. What are they? Not everyone can see them. One needs to be brave to see the world through their heart. Each heart is different and yet full of love. And when two hearts connect, a magical thread forms to link them. This thread is very powerful. In fact, so powerful you can create anything you want with it. George looked puzzled. Lila, Grandma, I promise anything. What is in the thread that allows you to create anything? George asked. Love, my child. Love is the most powerful energy of them all. The boy starts with the idea and started quite inconsolably, devastated by the revelation. What's wrong? If this is true, then how come Nigeria is this way? Why is Nigeria hurting so much? Grandma, moved by the boy's question, came closer to him and said, My love, dry your tears. It is not too late. Nothing is stopping you from using the power of love now. George hugged his grandmother tightly and felt the warm embrace of her love. Nothing is stopping me from using the power of love now? He kept repeating to himself. Once home, George told all his friends about the magical threads and their powers. His friends then told their friends who told their friends. Soon enough, with open hearts. The children sewed so much thread from their love, they could create anything. Nigeria! Nigeria. (laughs) The end. Well, I hope you enjoyed listening to that book, Beauty in the Dark, written by Georgina Duke, illustrated by Ella Duke. I certainly enjoyed reading it with Ugo. Ugo, did you like that book? Yes. What do you like about it? All the threads. All the threads coming from the hearts into the hearts, all the love, right? 
and just the thought that we can, with love, make a, a better Nigeria. Hmm. Oh, looks like we've run out of time. Well, you can find us on social media. Our handle is Simone Oasis. That's right, Simone's Oasis on all social media. And this has been our last episode, right? Of the season. Yeah, it's been. <coughs> have you? How, how have you enjoyed it? Great. Great. I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. He didn't seem convinced. But we do hope that you've listeners have enjoyed this first season of represented podcast story books of more for African kids, where we really just make an effort to help parents and help the kids out there to know what amazing books, videos, cartoons. All that good stuff that have our black and Nigerian and African children represented in them. And these wonderful contents are created by Africans and black people also, right? Yes. Because what do we say? Hashtag representation matters. What do you think? Hashtag representation, representation matters. matters. Yeah. Zanuga and I get really weird, but this has been absolutely awesome. What's your name? Ugo Ekezi, the host. That's right, Ugo Ekezi, the host. And I've, his mom. The Tony, host. That's right, the co-host, the, the, um, the junior. Um, and my name is Tony Falugi Ekezi, and this has been Represented Podcast. Well, till next time, which would be a new season. Thank you for listening. You can, of course, follow us, as Ugo said, on social media at Simone's Oasis. Share the podcast with family and friends. Subscribe, like, tell people about us. We are working for a better Nigeria, just like the book that we just read. Take care. Love. Kisses. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye. For sponsorship inquiries, you can DM us at Simone's Oasis on social media or send an email to hello at simones-oasis.com.